Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you for coming to the .NET conference. Uh, yeah. I need to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so should I start? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the .NET conference 2019. Uh, this is uh, our third time doing the .NET conference. So uh, last year is uh, a bit. Uh, in the middle between changing from .NET Core 2.0 to 2.2 and a little bit, uh, you know, roller coaster ride. And now we have, uh, we already reached the era of .NET Core 3, uh, and this is what we are going to uh, talk about. So, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Riza. If one of you is a new is here, so I, I'm I usually uh, manage the community for the .NET, but now I have a lot of team members who can help me uh, with this community. Uh, this community is public community, is an open community. So uh, we would like all of you to always join the meetup. So other than this uh, conference, we actually have meet up every month. Okay, uh, maybe some of you still ask me, what is .NET? So .NET is actually as a platform for building almost everything now. So it's a complete set of, uh, yeah, you see here, desktop, web, cloud, mobile, gaming, IoT, and AI. Uh, last time, they can do this, but you need to have some kind of like expertise to do it. But now it's like everything is all in one package. It's very easy to use and it's uh, very powerful. So this uh, .NET is for building any build any, anything. Uh, you name it, I can say that you can do it in .NET. I, I can say like that. And this is a very good news that the .NET growth is uh, continuous. Now it's uh, more than the. 1 million .NET Core developers. So, the, but the entire .NET is more than that. And this is the .NET Core developer, it's more than 1 million. So uh, if you are part of the .NET Core developers, you are part of this 1 million. And then uh, the acceptance of communities PR is more than 100,000. So a lot of uh, pull requests uh, from the community asking for features, asking for anything or um, fixing bug, everything, and it's it's like amazing. If you follow the .NET uh, repo, uh, you'll see that it's very amazing. Uh, I always impress the one that is related to the engine, not the engine, the framework itself, like the memory or the garbage collection. It's now it's super fast. The introducing of the span, Okay, the, so it's uh, this thing is something that's very amazing that we probably never imagined that this will happen in, in the era of the uh, Microsoft right now, <laughs> but it happened. And then uh, the fastest adapted version is Visual Studio 2019. So now is once they release the 2019, everybody will download and use it. So previously it's like no, I'm still using 2010. I still remember. In 2016, when I asked someone, someone still using 2010, because I was like, uh, you want to jump to 2012 at least? <laughs> but now, once they release, uh, Microsoft release Visual Studio, everybody download. So if you're still using not 2019, or you're still using 2017, uh -huh, uh, make sure you download 2019, because it's very powerful, I tell you. Okay. So it's a few of uh, millions of uh, .NET customers because uh, last last year we did not put this kind of thing. Uh, a lot of uh, community members asking me, who's using .NET? Ah, there you go, millions. And this is some of the big company that is using that. And oops, NUS, yeah. So I work in NUS as a uh, part of the Center of Excellence of Maritime Port Research. So we did using .NET. 
all for the research. Seriously. And we love it. Okay? And a lot of the NUS also using uh, the And you see this all Tencent in China. Uh, yeah. Okay. Some of them I don't know. I never heard before. <laughs> what is this? Two Gs. Okay. Uh, this is game. Oh, I love this game. Okay? Uh, and this is the new release, .NET Core 3, which, is, uh, which has a new feature, uh, WPF. Now you don't have to use a .NET framework. Just to create WPF, now you can use just .NET Core to create WPF and Windows Form. Ah, okay. And it's side-by-side side uh, support, self-contained, executable. So now you can create a WPF and then compile only one executable, one exe. You just copy and then it will run in your machine. No .NET Core required to be installed on that machine. No need. Just compile, make it as one except executable file, self-contained, and bring to someone's computer without .NET. Run it. It runs. That is beautiful. Okay. And they have a feature, but it's still, uh, I think it's still experimental preview which trim some of the assembly that is not used. So .NET is a lot, right? But some of the assembly is not used. So they trim the DLL, make it slimmer. So for example, if the, the, the total compilation is like 76 megabyte, when you trim, it can be, be become like, I don't know, 20 or 26 megabyte. So the rest is just, they just, yeah, because it's not used. We, we, we have a lot, you know when you, Open uh, .NET to get package and wah, they will <laughs> they will pull like everything. But you still have to be uh, appreciate with .NET. Anyone in here has a uh, is a Node developer using Node? <coughs> yeah. How does you feel <laughs> with your npm package? <laughs> yeah. Even you you delete the Node module, it's like what <coughs> three hundred megabyte. Just to create hello world, <laughs> it's like this doesn't make sense. But but it happens. But in, in here in the, uh, thank God we, we don't have that kind of issue. Okay, and then there's a full stack web development with C sharp and Razor. Uh, now we can say it's a full stack. <laughs> it's a full stack. Uh, and uh, Razor. The good thing is now they have a so called Blazor. So Blazor, you can create a website if you don't like JavaScript, but don't hate JavaScript. You still have to love JavaScript. But if you don't like it, for example, you just want to use C Sharp, you can use Blazor. So you can create a website using C Sharp, pure C Sharp, okay? And HTML. HTML, you still have to learn up. And then the new C Sharp 8 language feature, okay? Uh, like, for example, like Nullable, and then uh, asynchronous uh, uh, I enumerable, something that you know when you do for each and then for each item of something that is awaitable, you cannot, right? Because if task, you have to get the result first. Hey, why? We are asynchronous. So now in the for each, you can put a wait in front directly. So you don't have to do get the result first and then you for each, okay? So now you can just do directly look within the await uh, in the asynchronous. Very powerful. Uh, later I will probably show you. If, uh, yeah. And then Visual Studio, uh, the latest one. Actually now, I think it's already. Ah, this one is the, the not the preview one yet. So this one is uh, the latest one, 16.3. And for Mac also, now it's like the Donut Core and the C Sharp 8 is supported fully in Mac. The, the the Visual Studio, so it's uh, very powerful. And then, uh, yeah, uh, just now I saw that I did not realize that actually Android 10 is already available when when I want to create a Xamarin. And then I saw in Android, I said, hey, it's no more, it's not Pi anymore on the top, but it's Android 10. So it's like, oh, it's very fast, very fast. Okay, so if you haven't used this uh, version, please download. And the community is free. And uh, this is a partner tools. If you think that uh, you're an application developer, 
you don't need to create everything from scratch. I'm part of the application developer in, in my software, research software, because I don't have time to create simple grid, that, that kind of thing, no. Just use this. I use Telerik, you can use them Express or anything in here. You just take it and yeah. Okay, you need to spend money, but it's, it's going to make from one month to one minute. That's all, yeah. So it's up to you, you want to spend one month to create a chart, for example, because you don't want to spend some money, <laughs> go ahead. But for me, I'm a simple guy, just buy. And then I use the chart, I, I can use it for my software. Okay, uh, and uh, remember last year we talked about microservice? When we talk about microservice, what happened is uh, we, need, we want to move from the old model concept of application to new model. Now we call it the modern app. Either it's a web or a desktop or anything, IoT or Edge. It's, it's a modern application. And modern application like the back end, we think always microservice now. We don't do monolithic anymore. Okay? Uh, but last year, it's a bit like a lot of people ask the question, how do you communicate between these two services with A and B? Okay? Especially if you have so many services, how are you going to communicate? Are you going to use a messaging? Or are you, are you uh, going to use a web API to talk to each other? How about the security and everything? So it's, uh, it's a bit like crowded. But now in .NET Core, it is built for this. You're going to love it, and it is built. Because they, they give new future here, which is already, truly last year is already in preview, but now it's there, it's already there. That is, uh, so this is the monolithic example. I'm going to go uh, to this first. So this is the monolithic, you create one app, and then you run it, and then if you want to scale it, you buy another server, buy another server, buy another server, and spend your money. Your server is only working like 10% probably, okay? But in microservice, you just create the service and then you can just jump to uh, Docker and Kubernetes and they will they will just spin it. If you need it, if it's not needed, you want to kill it, or whatever, okay? So this is a, uh, it's a good thing. And uh, the good thing in microservice is you your team can focus on a small, smaller pieces instead of uh, the entire project, which is, uh, yeah, for example, Okay, I need to. Uh, we need to create something like to send message from A to B with this blah blah blah, and then you have to think the entire project. No need. So this one, you just create library using a .NET standard 2.1, which is now already available, and then 2.0 also can. Uh, but I mean now 2.1 is already available, and then you, you can focus on that thing and then re create a uh, as a service. Later I'll show it to you. Uh, and then you just deploy to the Docker or Kubernetes, okay, using Kubernetes, okay. <coughs> so, uh, this is Kubernetes in Azure. So if you don't have a powerful machine or you don't want to set up Kubernetes by yourself on your server, uh, last time, uh, I remember, I think it's a, uh, on the session of in Microsoft Ignite, uh, Brian, one of the speaker, which is an expert in Kubernetes, is the one who create uh, uh, some part of the Kubernetes. Told me that uh, uh, it's better not to set up <laughs> by yourself if you if you don't understand all the bits. So just spin this in five minutes, you have Kubernetes, okay, and then you just deploy. Easy. And you can create everything, run anything everywhere. And this is the feature I'm talking about. Look at that. Yeah, the gRPC. Anyone in here using gRPC? Anyone in here using WCF? Boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So no one knows what is gRPC. What's that? You don't know. Okay. So. GRPC is developed by Google. Some say the G is Google, 
something is global, something is I don't know, who cares? But it's Google. So gRPC is a uh, similar like WCF. Okay, to communicate with to with contract. Okay, because why? If you use JSON, Web API, there is no contract. Okay, it's good only for web, but you cannot do streaming. You cannot do anything. Only send request, send request. But using this so-called proto buffer, okay, it's a binary. It's communicate between machine in binary. You send in binary. <coughs> so it's not XML like in WCF or not JSON, which is a string. And then you need to convert. This one is not. It's totally, exactly pure binary. Number one is fast. Number two is small size. And number three, you can do streaming. Okay? So if, uh, a, a big, big uh, application or enterprise application is using gRPC now. <coughs> okay? Unless you still have le uh, legacy WCF application, then you need to deal with that, okay? But if you don't have, you you can start on this. Go we'll start with the gRPC. Later, we'll uh, demo to you. you. You're going to love it. Okay, and then the next one is worker service. Yay! Okay? <laughs> <laughs> worker service, come on. You love it. You know, when you run Windows and you go to the service, there's a lot of service running. Okay, that, that, that is Windows service, right? Okay, but now worker service. You create one code, can be run in Windows as a Windows service and in Linux as a daemon. Ah, okay, so you can run background like you want to pull some, some data in the background, you know, on the server. We just use worker service, okay? In fact, this is very good if you do a, a container-based application. This is a very powerful, useful uh, feature to use, okay? And then the last one is uh, the web API plus identity. You know, they now already have an identity server, and, you know, you, you can use it, okay? Identity server. So now it's easy, there's no more reason that uh, identity is hard. Of course it's hard. That's why, don't create by yourself. <laughs> Use the one that's already uh, available, okay? Don't, 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 don't ever use username and password comparison again in database. Stop. <laughs> Never do that, okay? So, uh, should be the, yeah, demo. Demo, let's do the, some demo. How I do <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna put it here. Uh, let me know if you cannot hear me. So I'm just going to close this first. RPC, GRPC. Uh, look at that. Beautiful, right? Now we have this template, GRPC. And then, next. Uh, just give it that. And then you can put inside a Docker, okay, as usual. And you can see there's a .NET Core 3. And you create. So this, uh, I'm creating similar like WCF, but <coughs> it's a gRPC. So in here, I'm going to explain to you what is the component in here. So if you look at here, you have a, a proto. This is a proto buffer. This is the contract that you will use for <coughs> for communicating between two systems, okay? So this is the contract. So this is a, a 
this is not C sharp. Okay, this is not C sharp, but this is a standard of the the prototype buffer of, of, of the gRPC. Okay, so you need to follow this. Uh, documentation is available in, in Google. You can uh, see. Uh, so this one is the C sharp main space. Uh, you can name, name it whatever you want in here. And this is the service uh, greeter, which is uh, RPC is remote procedure call. Do remote procedure call. Call uh, the name of the method is say hello. Remember in the WCF there is a method you 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 have a uh, you can call and then there's a hello, hello request which is this one uh, string name uh, this one is index nothing that you do like one name no it's index so if you have uh, three parameters name uh, first name last name that means one two three it's just an index you 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 can index which one parameter that you want is the first the second okay and you reply also like that. So you will tell the, the this proto uh, uh, this part uh, on this part to tell the compil compil uh, com compiler to create this kind of contract, okay? And then the second one is the service. So this is the service of what is this uh, uh, greeter uh, and the contract use? So for example, this is the say hello. This is the one that you can call from the client okay say hello and then this is, you have to specify the hello request and this is the result okay so let's say let's change, let's change, let's change something here so, yeah i can use the Uh, this HTTPS. Let's open it in browser. Let's see what happened. There you go. What does it say? Communication with your PC endpoint must be made to a gRPC client. So this one is an API, but you cannot directly go to and use it okay so you have to a gRPC client which is using the same proto ah that's the key okay so let's add the client which is very easy let's add new project do you want me to create on the same solution or different because some of you probably don't believe me that this one is actually nothing not connected is it okay I create it here eh? okay you, you just have to trust me I did not reference, you will see that I did not reference the library. <laughs> yeah, last time uh, some people have a uh, weird. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a console app one. Okay, uh, I did not do this, okay? See, I did not do this. So what I did is I just copy this one. This one I copy, uh, I put in here. There you go. Same proto, okay. Same proto. And then all I have to do is just manage to get package, and then you install the the, the gRPC tooling, okay. So gRPC dot tools, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You install this one. This one. Uh, so the they can compile the proto. Okay. Second is a gRPC. If I'm not wrong, is dot net dot client. Okay. Client. Two web two dot.
okay and then in here when you go to the properties you have to make sure let me just show you what's inside this so inside this you see that because we copy from here this proto is a the first one is actually for server okay so we need to switch for client the proto so to do that you can do just right click in here or you can just replace it inside whatever which one you want you have to make sure this using a proto buff compiler this is the yeah you have to choose this meaning that this proto buff file will be compiled okay if you don't do that it's not going to create the, the thing okay and then you have to switch this to client only okay switch you can see that this uh, client but look at what happened oh got an issue okay don't worry just do like this there done okay now did i miss something did i miss something no correct or not okay okay let's 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 do this let's say i have let's see whether the hello request is available let's say var uh, right request equals to new hello request is available yay is available you see using i'm not referencing it yeah? i'm using where is this grpc service to come from the in the proto we have a c sharp namespace right so if you rename that this will be renamed but i did not reference okay so i just want to make sure that i did not reference uh is it better to uh to rename the, the proto one called grpc to client maybe it's more easy to be mistaken yeah yeah okay you can you can yeah you can do like like that yes yeah. Then uh, name uh, Mila, okay lah, whatever. Okay, and then after that we we have to uh, create the channel. Okay, so number one we create the channel. Uh, new greeter. See now we have greeter. So this greeter is not. I did not reference again. Just want to make sure that I did not reference. Okay. And, ah, sorry, not channel. Okay. I will explain because I already actually did this before, just to make time faster. Sorry about that. Spend time typing. Yeah, sorry. So this is the first one, the gRPC channel for address, which is connecting to the gRPC server, and then the next one is the client, uh, greeter, greeter client, uh, which is the channel, and then you send the uh, say hello, async, and then reply the message. Okay. So this is the the. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. Uh, this one is. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Just put something like that. And then this one is. We just compile. Ah, the thing is when you compile your PC, just make sure you clean first. Sometimes the the because this one is a uh, is created uh, like auto generated mm -hmm. the the C sharp for the proto buff. Uh, sometimes uh, like over inside the you know yeah just make sure clean solution and then compile again. I I got some issue uh, when I try to play around with this. Okay, and this one is the the blue. Oh yeah, I missed this one. Sorry. Just want to. So this is the Google Proto Buff, and 
and then the gRPC net client and gRPC tools and this is the client okay and then to run this as usual we run the server first okay the server first and then we run the console okay run there you go so this one is nothing to do with the reference so this one is using uh, like WCF you call a method on the server okay so this is very easy no API no conversion no JSON no more web API you just do like this and if you want to change the model the proto bug you just change and recompile and copy the proto bug to the other you can you can actually use a what do you call it a link instead of copy the file you can link you know so you only have one file and then you you compile to create the thing okay so the, that is yeah the rpc so now if you want to communicate between server and client even for mobile app like xamarin Oh, you're going to love it. You're going to say goodbye to WebAPI. I tell you. you. Just use this one. Okay. And this one can do streaming. Okay? Can do streaming. So you can stream, like, for example, a long data. You want to stream, like, real time data. Yeah, you just, you just you stream. You will just stream. Okay? So, as long as so you can I just use this one to transfer the file? Can? Yeah. Uh, can, but usually. The way you transfer the, uh, in the web, they already have the the way to do that. So this one is more to like uh, so call it uh, communicate between uh, service and client or service and service. Yeah. So this one, uh, you just imagine if you create a microservice. Let's say you have 10, 20 microservice running in Docker in Kubernetes. Wow, this is lovely. Now you can just call, and if you want to change the proto -bug, you change and recompile everything yeah. so no more looking at the JSON oh, what, is, uh, what is the what is the property it's no, no more doing like that anymore. okay that's the idea of that's why it's .NET Core 3 is is for microservice okay let's continue the slide I need to catch my <laughs> C sharp. So uh, now in C sharp we have a nullable and non nullable reference. The thing is when you know 50, I think 55 years ago they create the nulls and actually it's a nightmare, right? Why you have a null? Okay, <laughs> okay, we shouldn't have a null, right? We want to declare something equals to null. Why? If you want to declare something, you have to have a value. Not no, no, it's not a value, right? So that's why uh, it's become a problem until now in C sharp. But now it's easier to manage the null, no, because even string it can make a, uh, they can detect if it is a nullable or not. Okay, so this one you can see the video by Mark Togerson, uh, long, very long explanation, twenty-seven minutes talking about no. <laughs> yeah, just no. 27 minutes I tell you but you're going to love it because now you understand that we sometimes make a mistake with that stupid error uh, uh, what, what do you call it uh, no reference yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare yeah. because we don't know sometimes but if, if you go to the the project file and then you enable the nullable okay you, you set to true they will automatically the Rosalind will automatically detect which one is is uh, got an issue with the no and then they will mark as a green squiggly they're not going to say it's an error it's a warning but they will tell you if you run this and this one got no you're gonna catch a throw up true true exception okay and then is a uh, modern uh, like I uh, explained to you asynchronous stream uh, asynchronous I, uh, I innumerable okay uh, uh, you don't have it uh, uh, you don't like it Usually, what? If we do, why we why we ha should be happy with this? Because previously, if you want to pull data, okay, asynchronously, let's say a long data, ten thousand row of data, you have to pull first, and then you have to loop. 
Okay? You don't have to do that now. You just asynchronous IO removal and they can yield. So you don't have to pull the data just to you want to, to get something and then you have to pull and then you look, you know. You don't have to do that. Now you can just asynchronously pull the, the data uh, of a list, for example. So this is very, very powerful, okay? And then it's productive, it's uh, a write a write class code using patterns. Ah, you're going to love uh, the patterns. Anyone in here already using the pattern, like the if or switch? Switch pat yeah. Now the switch is not like the old switch, the switch statement. Eh? Now you can use using a pattern, okay? Similar like in C sharp, uh, F sharp, okay? So if you have a multiple object in, in, in switch, now you can just use a pattern, okay? You can even use just uh, the, the equal sign and and uh, yeah, the arrow <laughs> sign, sign to, to do that. And the Windows desktop app, okay? Uh, deployment flexibility, because now we have a, you can create a single executable file. Uh, yeah, you can just deploy. And for Windows 10 is uh, using a, a XAML Island, for example. You can use a native Windows 10 in your WPF or Windows form if you want it. Let's say you want to use the UWP map, Big map, not Google map, eh? Big map, for example. Then you'll be able to use it now, okay? And then it's open source, yeah? You don't like it? Send a request, okay? Or you want to add some feature? Send a request. Okay. And this is the good news. App Center. Ah, okay. Now we have App Center for WPF and Wing Form. Believe it or not. Anyone in here using App Center? You love it, right? App Center. Not more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in preview for the. Yeah, it's still very. I, I mean, App Center. I, I we use it in in, in Xamarin application, which is, which is very powerful. So let's say you create a WPF app, okay, in your client, <coughs> and there's some error, okay. What what you usually do? The client you will you will see the log. You go to the client, you get the log file, and then you, okay, that's nightmare, right? Now you're using App Center. You sit in your office. They are a thousand miles away from you. They create an error. They will send to you their like diagnose or statistic. Okay. So this is App Center. It's very powerful. Okay. So you can uh, they can create uh, uh, co collect real time. Uh, it's similar like Xamarin. If you do Xamarin, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is uh, very powerful. <coughs> uh, sure. Okay, you, you didn't move yourself. You just go to and then choose Windows from the Okay, for mobile app summary, uh, is Android 10, for example, native performance. Anyone in here not using summary? <laughs> using uh, Flut Flutter? Flutter? Uh, okay. You should try using summary, it's very powerful. Yeah. Uh, the new feature like hot reload, so you can do exactly similar like what Flutter did. So you can change the XAML and then you don't have to rerun the application. You just change it and then, yeah. It's uh, very powerful. And it's cross-platform and it's a free open source. So, uh, yeah, that's for the Xamarin. This is the new feature, hot reload, okay? and hot restart so if you change the XAML it will just change if you change the code it will hot restart and it's very fast okay it's very fast should I demo? <laughs> no, no time okay. uh, web apps with Blazor okay so this is a very powerful uh, stack I'm going to say uh, well very powerful way to create a web you should try try this okay you should try this so I think I need to be on this okay, let's, 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 let's. 
So usually when we create a web like MVC, you know, you have to, you know, follow the rule of web development like in, in other way, like, like in yeah. Django or in Node or in the M MVC, ASP.NET MVC, okay? But this is a, a different way because this one is using the web assembly. So your C Sharp will be compiled into a web assembly and will be run on the browser. The DLL will be run as a WASM file, it will, will be run on the browser. So which browser supported? All of the browser supported already. Because this one is not created by Microsoft, it's not created by Google, no, it's created by the community of the, uh, the, uh, the consortium. So they, they have this now, you can run uh, uh, a web assembly on every browser, okay? So you create using C Sharp, you do the thing, no JavaScript, okay? Okay, maybe less JavaScript if you still love JavaScript. You, you can add in the HTML, but you can actually just no use JavaScript at all. Okay. It's very powerful. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> uh, <Is> Just now, sorry about that. This and then I type blazer. Blazer. So this is the, the thing that I choose just now, Blazor app. Look at that. Wow, you can, you can do it <coughs> using Blazor now. So this is the, the file. Normal website, right? See? But the power is inside this, the Razor. Okay, so this is the, the thing. You still use the HTML, but all C-sharp. When you run this, <coughs> this is not a typical MVC application. This is actually a SM web assembly running. It's like like you create WPF. So it's running the DLL. It's like running a DLL inside your browser. So this is what 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 you get when you click the counter. So this is nothing that to do with JavaScript. No jQuery, no. Okay. So if you want to create SP8 and you don't like uh, to use uh, Angular or you don't <coughs> like to use any of that thing, you can use Blazor. Okay. Number one is faster. The performance is a compiler binary running on, on the browser. Okay. Number two is very small. Okay. 
Yeah, and number three is you can do whatever you want inside. Okay? You try this laser. It's very powerful. Yeah, last last year we already demoed this, but uh, now it's 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 getting more powerful. Okay, something to uh, no. is very mature. It's 1.4, yeah, if I'm not wrong, okay? So, uh, it's like you create .NET now, in, in your mind, you should think about machine learning now. For example, if you, you if your app still using cert, using uh, conditional, okay, or still using uh, like a SQL query, oh, forget about that. It's, it's not smart, your app is not smart. Use a machine machine learning, for example, when you do searching, or where uh, you can do or detecting. Okay, and the good thing is, uh, when you add this, and then you use the like, for example, like uh, the cognitive service in Azure. Okay, uh, there is one, for example, in preview the OCR. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, service for for OCR. So even your, for example, your receipt. I have a lot of receipts, and sometimes I have to record that, and I don't have time to write it down or type it in Excel, okay? So you can just create an app and then you scan using your mobile and you will automatically create a form very easily, okay? And this one, because is a, uh, that, that machine uh, is a cognitive service, is a, can be used as a container, for example, you can bring it into the edge to your application directly without connecting to the internet, for example, okay? So, uh, and using a machine learning like ML.net or AutoML to generate the uh, the model. So this is a very powerful way. And you can extend with the TensorFlow and uh, or using the open exchange uh, format to communicate and together the model, okay? So make sure that in .NET, once you use .NET Core 3, in your mind, is a modern app. Modern app number one is uh, the back end use microservice, okay? Never use monolithic, oh, I only have one server, server, okay. But when you design the code, when you architect the code, you should put in your mind that this should be work if I move it to microservice, at least like that, okay? So the way you code everything. And number two, when you design the app, should be able to have some smart feature okay, inside the app. So it's like not, not, not just like a simple uh, thing. Unless your app is simple, but if your app is not simple, then it's very difficult. Okay? I, all of my apps for searching, I, I never use conditional anymore. <coughs> I just put inside everything the data inside the uh, anything that you want you want to use to generate the model, and it will train, and I just use it. That's all. It's very simple. Okay, and then IoT uh, support Raspberry Pi. Okay, but I think Raspberry Pi four. I did not see that. <laughs> yet coming, but Raspberry Pi 3 is uh, available. <coughs> and read sensor data, and now with the gRPC or using the latest signal R, okay, you'll be able to just send the data back and forth uh, for the IoT. And then work with containers. Just remember in mind that you have to create uh, as a microservice. That's why IoT. Okay, so uh, Microsoft sponsorship for open source project is the gRPC, which is the Google RPC, maybe. Identity server, 
make sure when you create a login page everything make sure you follow the rule of the identity security protocol okay never create by yourself because security is very important okay don't play around with security don't test the hacker don't okay so if you don't know what what you're doing use identity server okay just use it the one that someone already created very powerful and secure okay and then use swashbuckle yay anyone in here using swashbuckle oh okay use swashbuckle right yeah anyone don't know what is swashbuckle what is it? it's a swagger a swagger <laughs> So when you create an API, okay, uh, you want to test or you want to run it, okay, you can just use Swashbuckle and they will list for you beautifully with all the explanation and then you can test directly on the website, on the site, okay. You just enable the Swashbuckle, press F5 and it will show all the, the API list yes. and then you can test it. So that's number one. If it is very complex, you can use Postman, for example. But for simple or uh, okay, not actually no need to be simple. Complex also can use Swashbuckle. Okay, it's very help helpful. So uh, use this three part. And the last part, I'm going to talk about .NET five. Thank you. That is .NET five. <laughs> Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. Have a look. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? This is .NET that five. So the one that I just talked, Zamari, blah blah blah. Next, probably we're talking about only this one, and everything works flawlessly. Okay. So .NET standard, uh, and this is the JIT and meeting. Wow. Okay something that you wanted, right? I'm still waiting for the native to <laughs> So I what I want is I create a C-sharp, I compile totally no need, uh, for example, the, the, the runtime. Just compile the like, like, like we do in C++. <laughs> if we can do that, done. Okay, so this is the schedule. July, we uh, release the RC. September, we release this. If you are an enterprise user and you want to have a long term support, next month. Okay, next month they will release 3.1. Use this, it's a long term support. Okay? If you uh, uh, a person like me, I play around with this because this one will jump to, yeah, you know, they, they will update the preview. But if you like, Okay, I need to create a uh, invest application for four years, five years, then use this one. Okay, they will not going to touch break breaking code. No, they will not do that. Okay, but if you want to follow this, ah, uh, it's going to be like roller coaster again. Okay, this one the LTS, and then after that they will release this on November twenty twenty one, the LTS, and then after that twenty twenty seven. Okay, 2023, don't have 8.0, okay? And probably don't have 9, directly 10. You know why? I don't know why. <laughs> like Windows, Windows 8, something Windows 10, no 9. Okay, probably the same. Okay, so this is the, the, the thing. Why now the, the .NET team uh, released this is because last time people asking, oh, what is the future of .NET? Look at the future, 2023. 2023 is .NET 8. Okay, and uh, and for the long term is a uh, uh, the LTS you can use it for real application enterprise and no need to re actually you can use that uh, starting from now the net core three and then after that once this one is released all you have to do is just replace with the net core three point one but the feature will be the same but this one is because it's a long term support so the, so they need to make something that is uh, should not breakable the code yeah, should, yeah. so it's uh, a bit. Okay, so this is a unified platform of the .NET 5. Look at that. Ooh, lovely, right? Runtime, compile language, the infrastructure, the .NET, uh, .NET 5, .NET standard 2.1, uh, 
now use 2.1 please okay. because the thing is uh, once we use the 2.1 uh, I give you the comparison now. Uh, .NET standard 2.0 the number of API is uh, around 20k 20,000 okay and then uh, not to uh, sorry uh, 1.0 uh, 2.0 is around I don't remember the numbers but 2.1 is 100 nearly 140,000 140k API in .NET framework, they bring it to the .NET Core. <coughs> okay, so you know, like they just remove the Windows part from the, 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 the .NET framework. They bring everything to the .NET Core and then they optimize it. They replace everything. They use the uh, async uh, enumerable. They're using a read-only span. That's why when when the read file is so oh. fast using read-only span. Oh. Okay, so if you have a, for example a very long. Uh, text file or JSON file you want to read and then don't save as a string okay that's already history use read only span okay because that one is I don't, I don't know how many times fast it's super fast okay it's super fast using read only span uh, it's like a string so the difference is you know when you create a string it's <laughs> on the heap right uh, the value type is on the on the on the stack, okay. So what happened is uh, every time you cut something like you you in this it's really substring this, you know, it will create the string new string. What happened is the memory is bubbling. Even you add plus this in the string, you know, it's going to bubbling the 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 heap. But in the using the read only span, they just move the pointer from the stack. So they just move the, the pointer from here, from here. So if you want to pull substring, they just find, okay, from here, from here, to pull. Okay, so that's why it's very fast. Super fast, I tell you, super fast. I don't even remember string anymore. <laughs> no, I still have string, but I mean, try read from this span, okay? So you can download now uh, <coughs> Netcore 3.0. So use it. You can totally create a, an app now either Windows form, WPF, a create beautiful app, create a, 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 a menu ordering for restaurant, you sell it, make money out of it. Uh, use Azure, use the cognitive service, create an app for mobile and make money out of it. You, 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 you can create a lot of things now using .NET. Okay, that's why I'm very happy with this .NET Core 3, something that uh, I've been waiting for a long, actually very long time since the starting the embryo of the open source.net <laughs> so this is like the ready stuff anything oh, like in the .net framework is now available in .net core and it's more powerful optimized and has new a lot of new features okay so that is the the, the .net core uh, 3.0 okay and thank you and enjoy for the, uh, the rest of your day in here and should I take question? Two minutes. Okay, you, I have two minutes. Any any questions you want to ask regarding this? Maybe I missed something. Yes. Yes, sir. Are, are there any plans for Windows Form to be able to run on Linux? Uh, okay. I you mean, can. Since it's on .NET Core, so yeah. technically it should be. Able to yes. <coughs> Actually, in my opinion, my personal opinion, Microsoft can do that. Can. But think why Microsoft don't want to do that. There's a lot of out there like Uno, Avalonia. They making money out of it. If, if Microsoft do everything, nobody can make money. So <laughs> I suggest you use Uno. <laughs> yeah, use Uno platform. Uno platform you can create exactly everything in .NET Core. And then you just run it in Linux, run it in mobile. They have use Avalonia and a, a, a lot of things for uh, like or a, a component like charts or grids or everything. You can use like from Dev, Dev Express, Telerik, or Infragistic. They already have that. But I, I said to you, Microsoft can if they want. They just hire like another ten 
powerful senior developer make it done in half a year done they can make it but i don't think it's a good idea it's better the community created by itself so the ecosystem remember the last point is the ecosystem that's what we're looking for yeah i know probably you trust microsoft uh, other than them but i tell you uh, uno platform is powerful yeah you just go to uno and then you you can use uh, that so you you create one you will see exactly the ui like in windows but on linux for example or using Aval avalonia and using example the good thing is using Zamo. Ah, they have. Okay, one more? No? Okay, yes, sir. Uh, just a quick question there. Just now when you demo the GRPC, I noticed yeah. that for the channel, you use a uh, pop. I'm wondering if the GRPC messages can uh, reverse across, uh, say, HTTP. HTTP? Yes. Yes, of course, can. <laughs> That's why I use four, uh, 5001, right? I can use the 5000 because when you compile uh, the .NET Core, they always create two. Oh uh, no, that's not my, my question. Ah, sorry. Because I was thinking that for web API, we all we send the messages across HTTP to say uh, like for for Ajax and all that. So for GRPC, we do similar by like sending the messages through through say. Oh, this one is using HTTP. It, it is using HTTP. Uh, the difference is uh, they have a contract, so the the client uh, and the, the the server and the client has uh, the same contract. So uh, no one can it's it's minimizing the, the the hacker. So if you don't have the same contract file, so you have to secure a proto buffer file. No, not anyone can copy that. If someone can copy that, then then they can create to connect to your system. For example, if you don't secure it. Because I was wondering if that's the case when I deploy on the server, does that mean that I have to open the top five thousand? Oh no no no. That one is because, like I said to you, when you F five, the net core always create five thousand and five thousand one. Yeah, it, it, it's just uh, it's just a a template a template output. Yeah, you can you can change for anything. Yeah, you can change even to www visa.com can yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a normal okay okay so uh that's all for my keynote uh i know i cannot demo all and because it's a uh, yeah the, the time limit and uh enjoy the rest of the day uh it's a lot of things that all the speaker will talk in details okay thank you very much once again and i hope you enjoy it thanks